In this video, we're going to talk about the sample slots that you see. These kind of dominate the first thing that you look at when yeah. you open up the material Big editor. giant gray sphere staring at you. Now, the first way I want you to think of these material slots is just your palette mm -hmm. for all of the materials that you're working with. Sure. Now, notice uh, my wording there. I did not say all of the materials in your scene. Right. And the reason I'm harping on that is that the sample slot area only contains 24 materials. Right. Meaning you can only put 24 materials in here at a given time. Now, I've had uh, many classes where as soon as I say that to the students, at least one person <laughs> will raise their hand and go, But teacher, does that mean we can only have 24 materials in our scene? The answer is no. No, absolutely not. You can have as many materials in your scene in as you want. In an amount. But you have to remember that the material editor and your scene are two entirely different places. Right. You can only have 24 materials in your material editor. You can have as many as you want in your scene. Mm -hmm. You can pull materials from your scene into the material editor. Yep. You can put materials from the material editor into your scene and vice versa. Right. Or you could put them from the material editor into a file for later. Save them out into a library. Yeah. Now, uh, I just want you to keep in mind that the material editor and your scene are two entirely different locations. Never the twain shall meet. Yeah. That way it's real easy to grasp that you can only have 24 materials in your sample slots. Sure, your and scene good. can be the beautiful painting hanging on the wall and your material editor sample slots is sort of like your workbench or your palette or, you know, kind of like your bunch of colors that you're working with at the given moment. That's right. Now, let's see. Uh, let's start off with the sample slots themselves. You notice I can click on any given sample slot and you'll notice down here at the bottom as I do that. Oops, see what I just did? Wah. Scary, isn't it? Uh, you'll notice that the name changes. So yep. I click, and you have you know, zero, 01 default, zero, 02 default, 3, 7, 8, 9. Yep. Also notice I have scroll bars on the side, so I can see the other sample slots for my total of sure. 24. So there's like six in each quadrant yep. in this case. And uh, I can also, uh, no, again, I make sure, I did, I did say this, if you click on one, it becomes active. You see a little white box around sure. it to indicate that you have selected this material. Now, I can right-click on a given sample slot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see a little context menu pop up. And uh, by default, this is going to be set to drag copy. So let me go ahead and set that up there first. Now, the first two entries you have, again, are drag copy and drag rotate. What drag copy is going to allow you to do is to copy this material into another sample slot. You can actually have two separate materials in your material editor with the exact same name and cause no problems whatsoever. You just have to keep track of it because you, you can, I guess you could uh, theoretically stumble up a little bit and cause problems, but only when you're trying to apply stuff to your scene. We'll talk more about that later. I yeah. don't really want to dwell on that. But if you need to make a copy of a material, say like, I have taken a material and changed its color. Don't worry about how I'm doing this. We'll discuss it later. And it's red, and I'm thinking, you know, I like this material, and I want to make some adjustments to it, but I don't want to lose this original material. Sure. I could drag this over to another slot, and it just makes a copy. Okay. Now, these are two separate materials. If I change the color of this one now, sure. you'll notice this guy's now blue. This guy stays So red. it's not like an instance. These are actually two separate material objects. That's right. They are two entirely separate entities. Now, uh, do notice, though, they both have the same name. They're both named 01 default. That's interesting in and of itself and something mm -hmm. that we'll be approaching a little bit later. Now, if I uh, right-click and go back to our context menu, you can change this ability for drag, to, uh, drag copying to drag rotate. And what this is going to do is allow you to rotate around the object in your sample slot, which because yeah. this is a sphere, you can't really see. Right. Now, this forces me to actually jump over and show a button over here inside the toolbar. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and do that. The very top button here controls your sample type, which is currently set to sphere. I can set this to a cylinder, and notice how now, when I do the drag rotate, we're just rotating around the cylinder. Sure. This is a nice way for you to preview a material on a theoretical surface and get an idea of what it's going to look like. That's all there is to it. And you actually were rotating the sphere, but since the sphere is exactly the same on all sides, you, you just really don't tell. notice. Yeah. Actually, if you look really, really close, you can kind of notice it moving around, but you won't be able to see it on the video. It's just on your machine at home. You've got to really kind of stare at the pixels for a moment. So uh, let me go ahead and set that back to a sphere. We'll talk about this button here very shortly. Let me go back to my right-click uh, context menu, and we'll set drag copy as our setting. Mm -hmm. If you have rotated that object, like that cylinder that I had, to some really weird rotation, you want to get it back to its default rotation, you can just click reset rotation. Sure. You can choose to render a given map. There are times when your sample slot will not show a material. It will only show a map. 
Now, that's something that I don't really want to get into right now, but later on, once we start working with maps, we can demonstrate that. So, that, like, maybe if, again, if I go into Photoshop and I make some really cool, wicked texture that's like alligator skin with circuits, <laughs> then uh, I it's could... It's always with circuits. I know. It's got to be... Well, it's, you know, it's 3D, so it's got to be cool and technical. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if I want, I can only show that image as opposed to this material, which is the final result. Right. So uh, if we want, we can just choose to render that out and get an idea of what that map's going to look like. We can access the options window, which I called up earlier just mm -hmm. by right-clicking. So there it is again, and we'll actually run into that again later on. Yeah. Uh, we can magnify any given sample slot, and boom! Oh, wow. Now that is magnification. <laughs> it sure is. And it's just a window that pops up, and you can change the size of it. So mm -hmm. if you need to see a material up close and personal... Boom, there you go. You can also rotate this if you're set to drag rotate. Right. It's like a big red button. It is. So let's go ahead and kill that. And uh, let's go back to right click. Finally, we can change the number of uh, sample slots we see at any given time. Currently, we have 3 by 2, which you can see here, 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2. Mm -hmm. If you set this to 5 by 3, there's 5 by 3. Ah, cool. And notice we can really only go one more outside the realm on each yeah. side. I don't think I've ever actually used that. Or we could uh, <laughs> we could right mouse and go down to six by four, and now we see all of our sample sure. slots, and our scroll bars are completely grayed out. Yep. Now, without trying to make things any more complicated than they have to be, mm -hmm. the sample slots also tell you the difference between the various types of materials you have in your scene, and by that I mean the difference between hot and cool materials. Sure. Now these are. Uh, almost like buzzwords mm -hmm. that you'll uh, you'll hear throughout the re the user reference and uh you know in some online tutorials although i have to admit uh the only time i ever really hear hot and cool being described is when i'm talking to other max instructors sure most people just say uh, is a is a material in your scene so let me talk about the difference between hot and cool materials okay to do this i had to create an object or two uh, let's create a sphere, like so. And, of course, all it has is the default color. This is not a material. Right. You have to keep that in mind. When you create objects, they come in without any materials on them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. All they have is this default color, which is more or less just used for organizational purposes. Sure. So I can take this material, and I can apply it to my object. Uh, we could just... Uh, come over here to my material menu. We can say assign to selection because sure. we already talked about the menu bar. Mm -hmm. So, boom, now this object is red. It has this red material applied to it. Now, notice what happened to my sample slot, something very unique. Triangles. I've got these little triangles in each of the four corners. These tell me that this material is hot, and by that I mean that the material exists in our scene. Mm -hmm. Remember that our scene and the material editor are two entirely different places, and these triangles in the corner of a sample slot are your way of knowing that a particular material exists in both places at the same time. Yeah. If you see triangles, the material is in your scene, therefore it is hot. Right. That's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't see any triangles... That means the material is not in your scene, and it is cool. Nice. So if you are ever looking through the uh, user reference or talking to your other, uh, you know, Max buddies, and you want to sound like you're in the groove, mm -hmm. uh, a cool material doesn't mean that it's really nice looking. Or, or funky. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that it's like, oh, wow, this is an awesome material. No, it just means that it hasn't been applied in your scene. Sure. So, so basically, if you cleared out a cool material, it wouldn't affect anything in your scene, whereas right. with a hot one, it would. That's right. So if I come over here to my hot material, which has been applied in my scene again, mm -hmm. if I change my diffuse color, and I'll talk more about this area here in just a little while, maybe to a shade of green, notice it updates in here as soon as I make a change. So let's go ahead and just uh, reset, and we'll close that out. So uh, that's the difference between hot and cool. Now, it gets a little bit uh, more technical than this. Look what happens if I deselect this object. Take a look at these triangles. Do you notice any difference? Yeah, they're uh, they're not solid anymore. That's right. They're hollowed out. If I select the object again, notice that they fill back in. Mm -hmm. You have two different types of triangles that will appear on a hot material. The filled-in triangles, the solid triangles, mean that not only is this material hot, but it is also selected at the moment. Right. If they are hollow like they are now, that just means the material is hot. You don't have it selected at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it's just a quick difference. Again, if I select the object, boom, filled in triangle. Sure, it's just an indicator really quick looking in the material editor to see you know, if that object is uh, selected or not. That's right. Yeah. Now, that's really everything that uh, I want to show about the sample slots. Again, uh, it, they're just, there are 24 of them. And these are your means for accessing and controlling your materials. Mm-hmm. 
again, just to, to reiterate, because I can't tell you how many students I've had really sweat this, do not worry about the fact that you only have 24. 24 materials is more than enough because, remember, the material editor is only going to hold materials that you are editing, hence its name. Yes. If you're not editing a material, it doesn't necessarily have to be in here. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of any time ever when I've been using 3DS Max that I've been editing 24 materials simultaneously. Right. So 24 should be way, way more than enough. So uh, that is going to wrap things up for this particular video. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.